um, the Van Dorn sampler. It's a real dog of a thing. It's just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to, at the risk of losing a hand here, I'll try and do that. <laughs> that's what happens. There's a messenger that gets sent down, and um, so it lies like that. <laughs> Set it down to a certain depth, and uh, then drop this uh, messenger to take a discrete sample of, of water. And then you've got to pull out these and grab your water sample. Uh, so it's probably not the, the not recommend it. Uh, tool of choice. Um, and uh, but it, they are about eight hundred bucks each. So, but that was until I came here. I, I never actually used the um, an alternate one, which is the Shinda Patellus. And the Shinda Patellus is great. It um, basically, uh, as you drop this through the water, this thing. Is pushed up, so the water drops through there. It's important to keep it moving, um, and and then as you get to your site, you give it a little tug, and that should close that door, um, and then you can then pull it at a steady speed up towards the surface. If you stop, you run the risk that that door will, up, will open. Um, so it's important to drop it down, give it a tug, shut the door, shut the door in it, and then raise it again at a constant speed. When you get it up to the surface, um, don't do a Nick Ling where you keep pulling things over the side of the boat like this. You know, try to get yourself into a decent position so that you can lift these things because remember each litre of water is, is, about, uh, is about a kilo so of, of weight um, and if you get the big Shinda Patalis it's quite an effort to raise it onto the boat. Um, and this little door here is, uh, is what allows you to raise and lower that to be able to just to control the um, water going that you take with your sample from. So it's pretty neat. Well, the alternative is you can raise the trap door. Uh, I don't wouldn't recommend that necessarily. It's probably better to, to be able to open this to control the water that comes out. A couple of our traps are pretty leaky too. So. Get to know the good ones. Or let me know which ones are the leaky ones because I've got okay. them in. I don't know. Well. Would it be any good for sampling sludge? That? No, I wouldn't recommend it. It's a, it's a water sampler, so um, this is what you want to use to sample sludge. Yes. <laughs> Sampling sludge, then this is the thing. This is the, the instrument of choice, and especially if you're sampling a set of lake sediments from depths. I'll keep my body well, well away from this. <laughs> and, uh, so you, you put this down onto the bottom, that goes down, and then you, you're able to raise this up. And it's great for taking non quantitative type. Um, samples. I forgot about the, the cora too, the sediment cora. There is another sediment cora which allows you to keep the bottom sediments intact. So the equipment dredge is generally done if you sort of want quali qualitative type samples of macroinvertebrates and so on, and you just raise this to the surface and you can then dig out the sediments or get something underneath here as you open it up and capture those sediments. The alternative is um, uh, Swedish gravity cora, and the Swedish gravity cora is basically a perspex type thing that is put down 
and we'll raise up your sediment so that they're intact. So if you're interested in layering and quantitative samples of sediments, then the Swedish gravity core is the one that you want to use. That's another one, which is a ponar grab. Um, when you're putting this together, it's very heavy. Um, the spring goes in here. When it hits the bottom, you um, send them. You can actually just hit the bottom, and just give it a couple of good jerks, and it pops out and closes, um, and keeps the sediment in there. Make sure you give it a good clean out once you're taking your sediment out of it. Also, when you're handling it, um, it can close up on your hands. It's very heavy. Um, you can get your fingers trapped up in here, and that will hurt. <laughs>